Hi there, I'm Anna Prosser Robinson for GameSpot here on the front line at San Diego Comic Con 2013. Arguably, the game publisher with the biggest presence here at Comic Con has been Ubisoft, and they invited us to come check out their new game, Watch Dogs. We talked to the lead story designer, Kevin Short. You're the lead story designer for Watch Dogs. What exactly does that job entail? Uh, it entails, uh, I, I take care of the core narrative that uh, happens in the game, the core story that the player experiences, but it goes beyond that. Uh, it means that the the city, uh, we need to create an entire city of Chicago, and so it needs to be alive. There's a lot of uh, citizens that wander around, they have stories, and so we have to create all those stories. The main character's name is Aiden. How did you go about creating him? Uh, that took a long, long time. It's kind of, Aiden's one of those guys, it's, it goes beyond just the writing team. It involves the uh, game design, the uh, graphics uh, team, the artists. Uh, we, uh, we looked for a guy who we felt could be, you know, we wanted someone who's uh, street smart, who can uh, handle himself uh, uh, in a fight, you know, and, uh, but also is a guy who uh, knows how to, uh, how to hack into things. That was key. So we, had, we needed those great, those two combinations. Uh, the cap, I think, was a really important part because he's a guy, he's a vigilante, and the cap uh, was uh, one of those signatures where he uh, he's disguised, but he's not disguised. There was a f there was a funny moment where we were trying to figure out well what could we do with him? How could we get him to be, uh, you know, what what could we do for Aiden to give him a, you know, uh, that fits who he is? And one of my writers grabbed his baseball cap. He said, "I think a baseball cap's the way to go." And he grabbed his baseball cap and he just went off to uh, a restaurant. And he uh, went inside. He ordered his food and he was talking to everyone. He was just talking to people and he made sure that he never made eye contact the whole time. It was just like this, talking, talking, talking. And he said he got along with everybody. Everyone reacted to him fine, as if they were talking to him and meeting him. Out he went, and nobody got a look at him. And we thought, oh, that's that's, wow. that's our guy. <laughs> wow, what research! Yeah. So I've been told that also that Aiden is kind of a little bit more relatable. You know, he doesn't have any superpowers. He's not over the top. Is that by by design? You want the player to be able to identify with Aiden? Yeah, for sure. You you definitely want to make sure that your your main player that that you're controlling in the game is someone you can you can identify with. And you're right that that, that the key thing he. He's, uh, he can hack things, but we wanted to make sure it was always important to us that every hack he does is grounded in reality. We did a lot of research and we figured out that you know, maybe you and I can't actually do it, but hackers can do it. They, all the things that we show in the game are possible. There are no superpowers. It's, it's part of what uh, is in our world already. How do you keep the, the player interested in the story when there's so much to explore? Well, we want to make sure that they've got both, right? So yeah, for sure we want to make sure that they've, they've got this uh, exciting world to just explore at will, but I think at the core, Pierce's, Aiden Pierce's story is, is something that's interesting and it's relatable. You know, he's a guy uh, who's made some mistakes. He's definitely a flawed guy. He's not your ideal hero. He's, uh, he's messed up, and uh, because of that, his family got hurt, and so now he's trying to find the people responsible for, for doing that. Unfortunately, you know, because he's delving into the past again, he runs the risk of making the mistakes happen again. And uh, I think, uh, hopefully, that uh, we feel that's something that players are going to be engaged in. They're going to want to uh, follow along and, and help him uh, solve it. Well, recently on everyone's mind has been this NSA surveillance scandal, and that, that certainly has some interesting parallels to the game. Has that been been part of the influence for the game or has it I mean are there parallels to draw even uh, it's int yeah for sure I think the parallels are, are interesting but you know um, ours is a, certainly a different system where we're CTOS and uh, um, I think I'm hoping that players are gonna put down the controls when they're done pick up their cell phones and then just kind of think about okay well, what everything I saw in the game and here's my cell phone and what does that mean for my privacy yeah. I really think it is that that's what's key to us is we don't want to come away saying Technology is bad or technology is good, right? I, I think at the core, I you know I love technology. I love what it brings us and what uh, what it can, uh, what, how it connects us. You know, the fact that we can connect around worlds in in seconds is a wonderful thing. But I think it is worth just sort of pausing for a second and kind of thinking, what does this mean in the big picture? I I don't think we want players to come away with a distinct answer of uh, whether it's bad or good, but we want them to stop and hopefully have a dialogue with their friends. Are you excited for Watch Dogs? Let us know. Mention me in your tweet at Anna Prosser and use the hashtag SDCC and you might win a pair of Hammerhead earbuds from Razer.